peace. Inner peace. We all want it. We often talk about it. But what exactly is it? Where can I find it? What do I need to do to experience it? Peace. These are not easy questions, but they are questions of immeasurable importance. And arguably they've never been more important. For peace is the opposite of anxiety, the opposite of restlessness, the opposite of loneliness. All of which, if you follow the statistics, are said to plague our society just like a pandemic. And that itself is quite telling. For we are also said to live in an age of unprecedented and great freedom. The freedom to be endlessly entertained. The freedom to reconstruct one's identity in accordance with just how you feel. The freedom now, as of last week, even to decide when to commit suicide, to end our lives. Why then is peace in such short supply? Or have we actually any real idea of what peace is? Because we no longer have any real idea of what it actually means to be free. Christ's promise in today's gospel is very clear. Peace I bequeath to you. My own peace I give to you. A peace the world cannot give. That is my gift to you. A peace the world cannot cannot give. But he also makes it very clear the only way you can come to experience that peace is if you love him. Those who keep my words, those who do my will, they are the ones who experience that unworldly peace. So in other words, if you want to experience true, lasting peace, then you must ground your identity in the truth of who God has called you to be. And the critical word here is truth. Catholicism is never about following our Lord for convenience sake, or for the sake of a pleasant feeling, and certainly not for the sake of blind obedience. For Catholics, the pursuit of true peace is inseparable from the pursuit of the truth. Truth is the gateway to being truly free. And that's the critical difference. Worldly peace is sought by trying to find a way to be content. As long as I'm free to do what I want and you're free to do what you want, then we will have peace. According to Christ, however, you will never experience true peace that way. Because true peace can only be found with reference to the truth. So the antidote to anxiety, the antidote to restlessness, the antidote to loneliness is to order one's will and to ground one's identity in divine truth. The first obligation of every Catholic, and it should be of every human being, is to follow the truth, no matter where it leads you. On this day, well yesterday, at 10.30 a.m., 11 years ago, I was ordained a priest at St. Mary's Cathedral. And throughout my Catholic life, the one thing I've become certain of is that I've only ever had a foretaste of that unworldly peace when I have trusted in the words of Christ and not my own. As you know, no one chooses to become a priest. If you do, you're going to be a disaster. And I certainly never wanted to be a priest. However, there is nothing in this world that has given me greater joy or a greater sense of peace than being a priest. And so in keeping with the theme of last week, I thought I would uphold to you one of the saints who I've often called, or is often celebrated as the hero of peace and one of my priestly heroes, St. Maximilian Kolbe. Because in many ways, this man embodies everything that is in today's gospel. What it means to ground one's identity in God and not man. For those of you who don't know 
Maximilian was a priest who was imprisoned in Auschwitz by the Nazis for speaking the truth against them. One day, in retaliation for the escape of, about, uh, of a prisoner, all the prisoners were lined up and ten men were selected at random for execution. A married man with a young family was chosen and he began to remonstrate, plead with the Nazis for his life. Please, I have a young family, I don't want to die. And little did he know that standing behind him was Maximilian Kolbe, a priest. And as you probably know, Maximilian Kolbe steps forward and offers to take the man's place. Now, this is the clincher. The Nazi guard asked him, who are you? What is your identity? And you think the first thing you would say is, well, my name is Maximilian. I'm Polish. I enjoy study. <laughs> who knows? We could think of many things we would say first. But Maximilian said the one thing that defined his identity most of all, because it was the identity given to him by God. And he says five words. I am a Catholic priest. Nothing else. Who, what is your name? Nothing. Silence. Interesting. He steps forward, not a hint of aggression, not a hint of anger, completely at peace because he knows who he is. I am a Catholic priest. And so he was condemned to die by starvation. But so in love was he with the truth of who Jesus Christ is and who he was as a priest, that there's no hint of anxiety, not a moment of restlessness, certainly no loneliness, because he went to his death, and I quote, singing joyfully. And such was his joy that after several weeks of starvation, he still wasn't dead. So the Nazis eventually injected him with carbolic acid. Now, Maximilian Kolbe is said to be the hero of peace because he reminded the world in a very dark and desolate place that ultimately the only thing that matters, the only way to have lasting peace is to do God's will. But he's also a reminder to us today in, a world of, in our world of what it means when someone actually speaks the truth. How do we know someone is actually speaking the truth? Maximilian Kolbe knew the truth of who he was. He defended the truth of human life, and thus he was enveloped by the peace of Christ, an unworldly peace. He did not die for peace. He died for the truth of Jesus Christ and his identity as a priest. It is the absolute paramount obligation and of immense importance that we never, ever, ever try to seek, the priest, seek peace by compromising on the truth. When people have compromised on the truth, all they can do is shout, get aggressive, and cajole people into accepting their way or the highway. And you see it in popular media all the time. When you see people getting really angry and they're cajoling, said, you will do what I say, you will succumb, with no reference to the truth. It's simply about them getting their way. You know they've given up on truth and thus they will never experience lasting peace. peace. Catholics must never follow that worldly trajectory. We will have peace in our life if and only if we are in right relationship with God. If our will is ordered to and in harmony with divine will. It is never a burden to follow the church's teachings, to do as God asks. It's actually the means to being truly free. For as Saint Maximilian Corbe famously said, no one in the world can change the truth. What we can do, what we should do, is seek the truth, serve it, and obey it when we have found it. Then, I promise you, you and I will have true peace.